Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Hello and welcome to our special show, the Tata vs. Mystery Case. Now, the NCLT verdict in the Tata Mystery Case is out. The fine print shows that the tribunal has made some scathing observations against Cyrus Mystery. Now, the verdict says, and I quote, it appears that Cyrus Mystery, because of heartburn due to being removed as executive chairman, tried to steamroller several business decisions upon Ratan Tata so as to bully him and the Tata sons, end quote. Arun Giri from Tax Sutra joins us with the details. Arun, take us through the key highlights of the order. Uh, it's a 368 pages order uh, and, and it'll take a few hours to go through every word of it. But we've done, tried to do it, you know, me and my team over the last uh, uh, an hour and a half to uh, and, and some not just scathing observations, uh, but some critical uh, remarks as well as very detailed, detailed observations and conclusions in this order. Every allegation made by the Cyrus Mystery Group has been dealt with in the NCLT order. For example, uh, the Siva Sankaran uh, allegation. What does the NCLT say? No money has been paid by any of Tata, any of the Tata Group companies for the acquisition of DTSL shares by Siva Group. It cannot be attributed that the company incurred loss by acquisition of shareholding of TTSL by Siva Group Company. Further, it says, as for the TTSL acquisition, it cannot be said that as a careless decision taken by management at that time. Same on the Air Asia decision, where again Mr. Mistry alleged interference by Mr. Ratan Tata and saying that this was a bad decision. What does the NCLT order say? It says that the Air Asia decision was not a fait accompli upon Cyrus Mistry. All sorts of allegations regarding Air Asia transactions have been made with impunity by Cyrus Mystery, flouting all legal principles. It further says Cyrus Mystery took active part in Air Asia Incorporation, presided over a meeting to further fund it. And then, you know, these remarks are very critical. Cyrus Mystery and petitioners have gone ahead to make a scurrilous statement without a shred of paper that Mr. Tata funded one terrorist through Hawala with diversion of Air Asia funds. Uh, uh, also, with regard to allegations on the Nana, 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 Nano project, again, where they say that Mr. Tata wanted to keep the project uh, going, uh, it, it says that the allegations made regarding the Nano project is without making Tata Motors a party to the case. NCLT feels they should have been made a party to the case. Uh, it further says almost all suggestions on the Nano project from Mr. Ratan Tata came on being solicited. Uh, then it says, the petitioners so disgustingly tried to drag in the concept of shadow directors to tag Mr. Tata and Mr. Sunamala. One more allegation was that Mr. Ratan Tata tried to, uh, you know, favor uh, Ola, where he has an investment. There again, uh, the NCLT says that Mr. Ratan Tata did not say that do a deal only with Ola and not with Uber, uh, where Tata Motors was in talks with. In fact, Mr. Ratan Tata uh, expressed his anguish that such a big deal of Ola buying cars from Tata Motors was left off the table because action was not taken in time by Mr. Cyrus Mistry and the uh, and the board. Uh, it also then makes some generic remarks uh, regarding Mr. Ratan Tata and Mr. Sunawala giving advice to, to either Mr. Cyrus Mistry or to Tata Sons. Uh, it says that Mr. Ratan Tata advising in relation to affairs of a company cannot be construed as conducting the affairs of the company. Not a single instance, the NCLT says, not a single instance in history of the company or in Tata Group, at least in Cyrus Mystery's tenure, that Mr. Ratan Tata's advice has been directly put into action without placing before the respective board. And, and the crux of the decision, you know, which captures probably the, uh, the, the, the corporate democracy rule uh, which the NCLT has affirmed, it says, by virtue of Tata Trust being at holding two-thirds stake in Tata Sons and uh, Mr. Ratan Tata heading the trust as per the rule of democracy, these companies have to be run at the wish of majority. That is, the trust headed by Mr. Ratan Tata. Uh, the NCLT also uh, upholds the sacking of Mr. Cyrus uh, uh, Mystery and says that it is evident on record that Mr. Cyrus Mystery created a situation that since he is being the executive chairman of the company, he is not accountable either to the majority shareholders or to the trust nominee uh, d d directors. So, uh, they, they've also rejected the allegation of Mr. Ratan Tata being privy to any insider uh, information or having violated any of the SEBI uh, regulations. Uh, that, in a nutshell, is some of the, uh, the, the key conclusions, findings of... Yeah, of the NCLT order. We have with us uh, a well-known legal expert, managing partner of Legacies, Mr. Suhas Sulzapurkar. Uh, Suhas, your first reaction to this 368 pages detailed NCLT order. Uh, thanks, Arun. Uh, 
Arun, you are right that all on all ten counts uh, that the that the adjudication has happened. NCLT has ruled that there is no mismanagement, neither is there any ground for operation. And in coming to this conclusion, I think NCLT heavily relies on the fact that there has been no ground made up for winding up on just an equitable reason, and that has to be proved for any operation or mismanagement allegations to stand. <clears throat> Having said that, you see, <clears throat> I'm sorry, the NCLT also hmm. comes to the conclusion that the jurisdiction under Section 241-242 of the Companies Act is an extraordinary jurisdiction. And this is where I think the entire interesting aspect has been discussed across the judgment. That there is no conflict between shareholders' democracy and primacy of shareholders versus the corporate government. What was tried to be made out was that corporate governance is slightly different in its in its perspective than the shareholders and democracy of the shareholders. What the judgment all across seems to suggest is that there is a fiduciary duty, and that arises out of corporate governance for board of directors, to act in the interest of the company, and therefore all the decisions taken in the interest of the company, do they stand the test of fairness or not? And I think in coming to conclusion on all 10 counts, whether it is Air Asia or whether it is uh, Chief Sankar and Chair, I think they have come to a conclusion that there is no material to indicate that there is no fairness in these uh, allegations, and therefore the allegations have been rejected. Having said this, it's also an important aspect for all of us to realize that this yeah. is the court of trial in as much as I think on the merits and facts of the case, I think this is the court that's going to come to the conclusion. If there are legal issues, they would get adjudicated uh, in the appellate forum. But in so far as the merits of the matter are concerned on the facts of the case, I think the factual determination and adjudication, this is the final authority. Yeah, so, so is can final I... authority. Yeah. Sure, Adam. Suhas, we have a couple of minutes left. Uh, you know, a few more uh, uh, key conclusions of the NCLT regarding the personal allegations made against Mr. Ratan Tata uh, that he is a so that he was a super director on the board of Tata Sons. Uh, you know what they say? They say that we don't find any. Uh, they say they don't mind any merit in this argument. They say Mr. Tata as well as Mr. Sunawala gave advices on being solicited for they being richly experienced over the affairs of the company. What is wrong in giving suggestions and in what way has it affected the affairs of the company? Uh, Suhas, these are important observations. Absolutely right. And I think the NCLT has come down heavily on these allegations, which uh, according to NCLT are completely unsubstantiated. In fact, they go the other way around. In effect, they say that, yes, it is in the interest of the company to mm -hmm. seek these advices and opinions. The second aspect, as we move towards the future part of it, one of the very important aspects that's ruled by the NCLT is that Article 75 of the Articles of Association of Tata Sun is a valid article and legally binding on everybody. What the article, in effect, means is the company's power to transfer shares by way of a special resolution asking any ordinary shareholder to transfer the share in favor of a transferer or in favor of a transferee in accordance with yeah. Article 58. Yeah. Yeah. It's a very important observation. Yeah. Suhas, so Suhas, so we have, so critical... have completely run out of time. Thanks so much for, for joining us with that uh, quick analysis of this long order.